Hello third grade and welcome to our close read for today. We will be reading about the man behind the kiss who is um, Milton S. Hershey. Think about Hershey, Hershey kisses. That's how they came up with the title. Before we begin doing our close read, we are going to learn and watch a video about how it all got started. Let's begin. The Lancaster Caramel Company was incorporated in 1894. Within six years, it took him from grinding poverty to immense wealth. Give them quality, Hershey said. That's the best advertising in the world. All his life he felt that this quality and his name on the wrapper were all the advertising he needed. Out into the world went superb candies under names like Jim Crack, McGinty's, Roly Poly, and Lotus. But it was his Crystal A caramels that formed the bedrock of the new Hershey bounties. The factory rapidly expanded outward, upward, and into other buildings. Branch factories and offices appeared outside of Lancaster, west and east. Soon, there were 1,300 employees. He was working so hard that he couldn't stop to think about um, who he was or whether, whether he, had he had friendships or not, or not that, he that he was just sort of sort paddling, paddling as fast as he could, as he could to keep his head above water. water. While he was no backslap or a wisecracker, Hershey earned his employees' respect by his constant willingness to peel off his coat and work beside them. In the midst of the runaway success of his caramel company, his restless long-range vision took his attention overseas to an item that had begun to fascinate him, the delectable bean of the cocoa tree. It could be roasted, ground, and broken down into a sublime liquor that formed the basis of chocolate. In the early 1900s, chocolate was really a luxury item that was only affordable by the economic top of the, of the ladder in our country. And I think one of the keys to Milton Hershey's success was that in the back of his mind, he saw making good chocolate at an affordable price for the mass, for the mass consumer, consumer. And, he and he wanted his product, product distributed, distributed everywhere. everywhere. I think he was the first of, uh, of his kind, uh, certainly, certainly in the confectionery industry. industry. And in a, and sense, in a sense, in a small sense, sense, I think he was to, to uh, chocolate what Henry Ford, Ford was, to was to automobiles. All right. Now let's learn a little bit more about Milton Hershey. Please read along with me. Now for this close read, we will be um, doing some of it together and some of it you'll be doing on your own. Please follow along as I circle or, um, or underline any words that are on here. First I want you to grab, um, we'll use pink because it's Valentine's Day or red. And let's label the title. We'll underline the title. Write out that is the title. Then I want you to circle the illustration, and we're just gonna write I-L-L -L for illustration. Then below the illustration, we have a caption. And then the last text feature that we have on here is a glossary and it already has that on there so let's just box our glossary that tells us definitions of words we might need to know we'll be writing those out as we go all right let's go ahead and begin the man behind the kiss when you think of valentine's day candy you probably think of the world's famous hershey milk chocolate bars or hershey's chocolate kisses in the early 1900s, the young man from Pennsylvania named Milton S. Hershey created the world's largest and most famous chocolate factory. Built with hard work, determination, and a dream, Hershey's factory not only produced delicious treats, but it also built a town. Milton S. Hershey was born on September 13, 1857 in Derry Township, Pennsylvania. He was an only child raised primarily by his mother. 
She instilled, so that means that she told him the values of hard work in her son from a young age. Milton was only able to go to school for a few years before having be, to begin work. He started apprenticing, that means learning, so let's box that word, <clears throat> we'll highlight it like this. And then I want you to grab the text tool and we're going to write out the definition for apprenticing. A person, and I'm finding this down here in the glossary, who learns a trade from a skilled employer. So that might mean like um, a baker watching another baker to learn how to bake different things. Apprenticing. With a confectioner, that's another one of our words. We'll write this on the opposite side. So grab your text tool. A confectioner is a person whose job is selling and making candy. Pause the video now to catch up and make sure you have these typed out. Remember, the glossary gives us the definition. We'll, we're just writing them in. All right, let's continue. <clears throat> so I'll restart the sentence. He started apprenticing with a confectioner in Lancaster when he was only 14. He worked hard and learned a lot. After four years, he borrowed some money from his aunt to open his own candy shop in Philadelphia. Unfortunately, after five years, Milton had to close his shop due to little sales. He didn't let that get him down. He decided to go to Denver, Colorado and continue to learn about making candy or candy making. Again, he tried to find success in opening his own stores. Milton opened a candy shop in Chicago and it failed. Then he tried to open another candy shop in New York and that one failed too. He decided to go back to Pennsylvania and try one last time. Success! Milton ran a very successful candy company called the Lancaster Caramel Company. It was very popular. His business was thriving, highlight thriving. If his business was going well, what do you think thriving means? Thriving means to do very well. Go ahead and write that out. Pause the video if you need more time. He sold and shipped caramel candies across the country. After a few years, Milton had an idea that he thought was even better than making caramel candies. He wanted to create chocolate bars using milk. To focus his attention on making milk chocolate, Milton sold his caramel company for $1 million and opened a chocolate factory to experiment creating candies with milk chocolate. Milton knew the secret to making delicious chocolate bars was to include milk in the process. He started a farm so that he would have endless milk to try new recipes. He worked hard day and night to find the right mixture. In 1899, let's think about how old he was. If he was born in 1857, how old was he in 1899? Think about it. He finally found the right recipe and became the first American to manufacture milk chocolate. By 1905, Hershey's Chocolate Factory was producing many different chocolate novelty items. That means that they are special to this place, like the innovative chocolate kiss. These ones. This Valentine's Day, when you pick up a piece of Hershey's chocolate or unwrap a little chocolate kiss, 
Think about the clever man who never gave up his dream. Maybe you can tell your parents about the history of a Hershey kiss. Let's go ahead and go to the next page. Oops, looks like I need to get the back. There we go. So on the next page, um, the first one I want you to answer on your own. It says, which of the following ideas from the article is an opinion? Remember, opinions have feelings attached. The word innovative is not included in the glossary. What do you think innovative means and how do you know? Now, I'm not going to answer this for you, but I'm going to help you answer the question by using cups. First, we cross out the question words. Then we use the rest in our answer. I think innovative means. And then you're going to write out what you think it means. And then use evidence to show how you know. Give an example from the text. Number three, what lesson can you learn from Milton S. Hershey? Again, I want you to answer this on your own by going back into the text and finding evidence. And we'll use cups to get you started. Cross out the question word. Write out the sentence, the lesson I can learn from Milton S. Hershey is, and then go ahead and write that out. If you have extra time and you would like to, on the bottom, so not on the back, on the bottom, you can write a letter to Milton S. Hershey asking him two to three questions that are not already answered in the passage. So maybe you want to know more about his family. They didn't talk a lot about his family. Maybe you want to learn more about his favorite um, types of chocolate when he was a kid. Once you are finished with these three questions, then you can move on to the next activity for today.